So we're gonna continue with the same circuit that we had in the previous video. We're just gonna add the power values and the uh, power factor. So let's take a look at them. Well, what do we do? We really just use Ohm's law because we have the values for the resistor. We could calculate power any number of ways. We could calculate power on the inductor, same way, Ohm's law with these values, and the capacitor, and we could even do the total. We'll deal with power factor at the end, even though we could solve that now. Remember, any resistive value over its corresponding total circuit value. Cosine of the angle theta, adjacent side over hypotenuse, corresponding values, eight ohms over 10, 96 volts over 120, whatever my true power is over my apparent power. That'd be my power factor, okay? But for right now, let's just calculate out these values. We could use volts times amps is the most common. Use any other uh, Ohm's law you wish to use. Okay. So again, we bump into this scenario. It appears that there's more power on the inductor. And by the way, this is a little unconventional to put power L or power C, but I, I'm just, it's a little quicker than writing uh, takes less space and writing out reactive or react or something like that. But it's my reactive power attributable to the inductor, my VARS L, my VARS C, the power attributable to the uh, 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 capacitor. So we have those. My apparent power, 1440. And the inductive power is greater than that. But it's the same deal we were talking about earlier the interplay between the two reactive components. And I left the ohmic and voltage values here, but the long vector, because it's in inductive territory, counts for the, also can, can count for the uh, inductive power, inductive VARs. And from that larger number, I take away this 720 from that 1584, and we end up with a total reactive power and that becomes the vertical side of my power triangle. Okay, so let's, let's again write the formulas out because I want us to see that pattern very clearly, what my formulas look like, how do I add these vectorally formula-wise? We have it in vectors here, reduced to a triangle, but I want to see the math formulas too. Fast running out of room on this board, but I wrote it only in one way. I wrote the voltance, the total circuit power, is gonna be the square root of, again, it's really Pythagoras, square root of the watts squared, it's my resistive power, which we'll calculate here. We already did that. My resistive power squared plus the difference between the inductive and the capacitive. We did that here, big vector, minus the little vector, net reactive power, which is reduced to this side here. With these vectors, I could have taken the triangle and drawn the big long inductive vector up to here, the capacitive vector here, and taken this value away from here to get the top point of my triangle to know how big my angle should be. I tend to draw it that way with those vectors and just draw the resultant triangle, which yes, is pointing up into, in series, pointing up into inductive territory, and therefore the circuit is gonna be net inductive, resistive inductive, okay? Capacitor took away part of the inductance, right? The, the capacitive reactance, if you will, took away part of the inductive reactance. But if we wanted to reduce this angle further, what would we have to do? Increase my capacitive reactance. If I increase my capacitive reactance, I'd have a longer vector here, and I'd be able to subtract more of the reactance and push the triangle further down. It's ultimately what we're building to, but these ones uh, make for nice little pictures. Let me fill in the rest of the numbers here. Okay, basically just transferred the power numbers over to that triangle there, okay? And you'll notice my total reactive power is 864 VARs. It's basically the big one, 
minus the little one of the two reactive components. Just what I did in here. So the square of this plus the square of that will yield the square of my apparent power. And as we've seen before in uh, series triangles, I have three types of triangles. I just layered them on the same one because my triangles are all proportional and therefore have the same angle, angular displacement, angle theta. So I could get my power factor, which we like to think of as watts over VA, true power over apparent power. Really, it's a ratio of efficiency. How much am I getting real work done, heat, light, motion, etc.? real work done for what I have to put into the circuit. What I have to put in the circuit is obviously made longer or shorter based on if I have more or less net reactants or total reactants. So what is my power factor? Well, 1152 over 1440. Might want a calculator for that, but could I use my ohms over my total ohms? Resistive ohms over total ohms? R over Z? 8 divided by 10? I can do that. 80% power factor. And that's what we have. Series RLC circuits. The main difference from RL or RC was this concept of one reactive component countering a certain amount of the other reactive component.